Hey everyone! A lot of you have been asking for some of the meals that we like to cook while we're on the road. While we are unfortunately facing this unexpected time off with the coronavirus, we have um, quarantined ourselves out on some public land in Arizona along with two of our friends, Don and Caleb. But not to worry, today is Sunday and there's only one thing that can mean and that is Sunday brunch. And when you wonder what to have for brunch when you're camping, there's really only one go-to item, which is biscuits and gravy. But I've also had a lot of people wanting to know how the Omnia oven works. And one thing I did in the past was I made up this uh, kind of dessert calzone. It's brunch, so we'll just call dessert breakfast. We're gonna make the sweet dessert calzone first because it takes a little bit longer to cook. And then Kendrick's gonna make us some sausage gravy later. Really simple ingredients for the dessert slash breakfast calzone. We're gonna use Fleischmann's Rapid Rise yeast and flour. For the filling, I ideally wanted to use peanut butter and Nutella, but with the virus going around, we went to the grocery store clean out of everything. Kendrick had the instant idea of, why not use Reese's Pieces? We're gonna experiment a little bit with the Reese's instead of the peanut butter and Nutella. We're also gonna throw some bananas in there, some cinnamon sugar, some honey, some nuts, and some raisins. I really feel like with those ingredients, you can't go wrong. For the utensils we're using today, number one is the Omnia oven. Next, I'm gonna use a measuring cup and a pot for boiling water. I did buy a rolling pin. However, if you don't want a rolling pin, you can always use anything long and round like a bottle. I'm also gonna use a meat thermometer, although I think you could get by without it. So we're gonna start with the dough. Now, I don't know if it's cheating to use rapid rise yeast or what, but I'm a simple girl. I don't have a lot of time. We're gonna go ahead and start with our dough. Making the dough seems to be a fairly simple affair. You mix the dry ingredients, the yeast, and about a cup of flour. I'm also gonna throw in there some cinnamon sugar. Next, you need to boil your water. And this is the one important part where it's gotta be between 120 and 130 degrees. Once your water is just as warm as you want it to be, you're gonna add it to your dry mixture. As you first get the wet and dry ingredients mixed up, it's gonna start to stick together, but still be quite sticky. So we're gonna gradually add another half cup to cup of flour as we're mixing it until it begins to form a ball of dough. Your next step is to knead it. I'm gonna move my cutting board because it's gonna slide around too much and just use the countertop, which I've cleaned off really well. We're gonna use a really light coating of flour on the countertop so it won't stick. We're gonna knead this dough for four minutes. The next step, if you're using the rapid rise yeast, is to let it sit for 10 minutes. Now with our slightly larger ball of dough, we're going to go ahead and roll it out. The goal is gonna to be to roll it into basically a rectangle shape. The circumference of the Omnia oven from the middle of it is about 22 inches. Uh, I've only done this a couple times before, so I would say make sure it's at least 22 inches wide, rectangular, so that when we roll it up and we put it in the Omnia ring, it's gonna fit as a side note to make all this work, while I'm in here cooking our dessert calzone, Kendrick is outside starting our fire because we're gonna wanna cook on it in a couple hours and it's gonna take some coals. So now let's get going on the filling so we can roll this thing up and cook it. So Kendrick and I had the idea that we would try to melt some Reese's pieces and then like maybe chunk up some of the other ones. This is a total experiment, but I'm happy to share it with you guys. So let's try. All right, so it turns out Reese's Pieces don't melt super smoothly, but that's okay. I'm still gonna spread it into our calzone. I'm gonna break up some of the other Reese's Pieces, and when we bake it, everything's gonna melt together anyway, so I'm not too worried about how pretty it looks. Next, I'm gonna throw on the uh, crushed pistachios that I self-crushed myself. The next and most important ingredient is bananas, and I don't know how many I'm gonna put in. I'm just gonna cut them up and put them on and see when I'm done. All right, now I'm going to throw on some honey. I'm gonna use a little more honey than I think I normally would because with the Reese's instead of peanut butter, it feels like it might not be super liquidy. And who doesn't love honey? And finally, cinnamon sugar. All right, it's time to roll this thing up. We're gonna just use a little egg wash. If you have a brush, that's super handy. I live in a tiny trailer, I don't have a little brush. So I'm going to use my fork um, and just put it right along the edge so that when we seal it, it does not fall apart. Okay, this is the real test. There's a lot of stuff on this dough here and I only have two hands and I don't know if I can do it. But do your best to basically roll it up and you want that egg wash 
part of the dough to touch the rest of the dough so everything doesn't fall apart. All right. Our Omnia has a liner, silicone liner, which is super nice. So I think we're gonna do our best to just put this bad boy in there. All right, finally, I'm gonna put some more of that egg on the top, put some cinnamon sugar on it. That way it'll brown and be crispy and tasty. All right, it is time to cook this bad boy. We got our calzone in there. This bottom pan is super important because that's what keeps it from burning on the bottom. And then, our lid. What I found the last time I did this was somewhere like kind of medium to medium high. Seemed to be somewhere around the 350, 375 range. We're gonna throw that on there and now we'll wait and check on it. And we'll head out and see how Kendrick's doing on that fire so we can make some sausage gravy. So the boys are out there supposed to be making gravy and they're dying without brunch mimosas. So Don and I are in here pouring mimosas. All right, so we've had our fire going for a little while now, starting to get some coals that we can cook on. We carry around one of these little grill grates that uh, we could just throw over the top, balance on some rocks, and start off by getting our cast iron a little warmed up, and then we'll cook some bacon. All right, now we're making the pork for the pork gravy. Kendrick wanted to buy seasoned pork, but coronavirus and all, we don't have seasoned pork. So we have ground pork and we're gonna season it. For the pork, we're going to use salt, obviously, pepper, a little bit of cumin, chili, garlic powder, and cayenne. All right, so we have the sausage seasoned, um, but to make sure that it's well seasoned, I'm going to uh, fry a little sample piece. So just take a tiny bowl, and then I'm gonna put it in Kendrick's pan outside. Oh dear, what do we got there? This is my test sample. Ooh. What do you think? I think we have it salted well. Okay, good. I think we, we don't can have much amp up the seasonings though. Mm -hmm. Much Alright, so we cooked our bacon. We have some bacon grease in here, which is perfect for cooking up more meat. The ladies have seasoned our ground pork to our liking, so we are going to throw that in next. Here we go. Oh dear lord, I did not realize it was that much sausage. <laughs> you said two pounds. You called for two pounds, sir. <laughs> All right, so we cooked up two pounds of brown pork. So I'm gonna take half of this and throw it into a little Tupperware and we'll save it for later. And the other half will go towards our sausage gravy. And now we are going to start making gravy. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of my favorite dishes my mom used to make and still makes, uh, so kind of holds a special place in my heart. With our cooked sausage, the first thing we're going to do after I get it heated back up is uh, sprinkle a little bit of flour on it. Good. All right, our next step is we're gonna add some flour to the sausage to start our gravy and hope it doesn't all blow away in the wind. We still have a little bit left. We'll add that here in a minute. All right, now our next step is to add a little bit of milk. I tend to prefer whole milk, but Mandy likes it to be a little bit more calorie free, so we use 2% milk, give and take. Yeah. All right, so I added my first batch of milk. That cooked down and kind of thinned out a little bit. So I added a little bit more and we'll just let that cook a little bit. So this is kind of looking how I like it right here. Maybe let it cook just a little bit longer. This, I can tell you, is going to be some delicious gravy that maybe rivals my mom's, 
but only because I learned from her. All right, remember that bacon we cooked earlier? Well, now we're gonna take it and crumble it back up and throw it in the gravy because that's what you do when you like bacon. Put it in everything. This is part of the reason why when I cook the bacon for gravy, I cook it really crispy. That way it splits a lot easier and it maintains a little bit of that crispiness whenever you eat it here in about five, 10 minutes. Most people might think a sausage gravy is supposed to be white. That is pretty incorrect. Instead, the brown color lets you know it's legit. All right, we've been baking this calzone for about 35 minutes now, and it is looking delicious. So we're gonna take it out of the oven, let it cool, and we're gonna get ready to get our brunch on. All right, we are all done. Cheers. And ready to eat. Salud. Cheersing our mimosas. Sunday fun day. Gambe. Sunday, Sunday. Gambe. All right, let's get into this food. Cabela's plates. I don't know. I don't even know. They They're might not be actually Cabela's. They just look. They remind me of it. When you cut my piece, you could make it a lot more generous. <laughs> That's fine. Make that mine. Yes, this was a Mandy piece, honey. Okay. I'm just saying. Ooh, it looks gooey though. I'm looks, excited it looks about very that. crunchy. There you go, Caleb. <laughs> Thank you. Today, I feel like we kind of got the best of both worlds. We have an amazing brunch with the, uh, the calzone breakfast thingy dessert, and we get biscuits and gravy with the gravy made over a campfire, which is pretty hard to beat. I haven't ate the biscuits and gravy yet because I'm focused on the dessert calzone thingy. I'll say the calzone thing turned out way better than I anticipated not having peanut butter or Nutella. It's every bit as good, if not better, than I thought it was mm -hmm. going to be. I started mm -hmm. with not dessert first. I also did the same. Mm -hmm. The gravy is magnificent. It is. It has a good heat to it. Yep. Definitely I a little love spice. The spice. It builds on you. Seasoning is woman's work. I mean, you can't be trusted with it. This gravy was a solid team effort. With Mandy and Dawn inside, putting all the spices in the meat, and then uh, Caleb and I outside drinking beer and making the gravy. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us for brunch. As always, I know I probably was not very specific with the amounts or the details of the recipes. So if you want to make any of these things on your own, um, I will put them in my blog, which you can find in the link in the description below. And if you want to buy any of the accessories, you can always shop through our Amazon store, which helps us on the road as well. And until then, happy Sunday fun day. Run so hard. Run so hard. I'll say one good thing that's come out of all this shit is the memes have been pretty off the charts. Oh, yeah. There have been a lot of good ones. It's one of the things I love about the internet, you know, it's like the government never wastes a crisis, but neither does Instagram. <laughs>